Hello. About two months ago, I posted a video. Its title was Unofficial Mycorrhizal Fungi Field Trial 2016 Part 1. So we're now welcome to my Unofficial Mycorrhizal Fungi Field Trial 2016 Part 2. If you missed the first one and you want to go back and have a look at it, by all means do. But this is what these vegetables looked like two months ago. So you can see how much growing has been done in, uh, in two months. These guys have been indoors on a windowsill. They're in plastic pots. The pots are sat in empty cans. And the reason I've done that was because I was watering these and I needed somewhere for the water to go if it went through the hole in the bottom of the pot. So I thought if I sit them in these cans, uh, I'm not going to have water all over the windowsill. Now what I'm planning on doing now is actually terminating this food trial. Um, because these things have just grown too big for the containers really. Um, and I'm not too sure that I'm actually going to get any meaningful, meaningful results. But the reason being that these things are actually in containers. And one of the things I didn't take on board when I kicked this field trial off was that for this microrhizal fungi to work and to make this, these root systems bigger and more efficient, then they would need room to spread out. If these guys had been in a raised bed or in a garden, they would have that opportunity. But because they're in containers, I'm not too sure they have the opportunity to develop bigger, better root systems. Um, so the value of this um, food trial is debatable uh, and when we come to a point of, of making a conclusion I think I'm going to let you make a conclusion I'm not going to attempt it so I'll go around the other side of this table now and we'll have a look at these guys let's get them out let's see what we've got okay Onions, carrots, broad beans, potatoes. Um, we'll move these to one side, time being, and we'll do the onions first. Um, if you saw the uh, first video, you'll remember that what we did was we inoculated one with mycorrhizal fungi, that's the marker and one we didn't inoculate with mycorrhizal fungi. The expectation being that we'd see a much bigger root system on this plant than this plant. And bear in mind the literature says that mycorrhizal fungi will work in a matter of days. Um, then after two months we should be able to see a difference, shouldn't we? So I'll take this guy out first, the one that doesn't have the mycorrhizal fungi on it, and have a look. Oh, and incidentally, <laughs> It doesn't matter what these cans say, <laughs> that's not part of the experiment. So you can see the roots are through the bottom okay, there's lots of root in there. And this is the uh, control uh, onion, this is the one that didn't have mycorrhizal fungi. Let's see if it'll come out. It feels quite tight in here, but it'll have to come out because it certainly can't go any further in there. Oh here we go. Well, it's quite an extensive root system, isn't it? And that's an onion that hasn't had the mycorrhizal fungi. Okay. Now this is the onion that had the mycorrhizal fungi inoculation. Let's pop that there. And get this guy out. I 
actually <laughs> there does look to be a lot more roots there this is the first time I've seen these guys out of these pots um, so I wasn't too sure what to, what to, to expect no maybe not maybe maybe it's wishful thinking maybe I'm hoping this mycorrhizal will fund his work what do you think do you think there are more roots there than there I think there is you know I think there is more roots there than there is there and that's the mycorrhizal fungi what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop these back in the pots just to put them to one side because um, I am going to call it a day now with this experiment and uh, I'm going to plant these guys out um, they deserve a go don't they they've got this far be a shame not to do anything with them so I'm going to plant those guys out uh, so that's the onions done um, Let's do these potatoes next, shall we? Okay, and this was um, the onions. Were, oh, crikey, I didn't expect that. There's plenty of water in there. I'll have to put that to one side. The, um, the onions were stirred on, and these potatoes are shallot. And the orangey, liquidy stuff that you can see is probably off the inside of the can. Charlotte doesn't want to come out. Let's see. Right, there we go. That's the microalizal fungi, Charlotte. And this is Charlotte without the microalizal fungi. What do you reckon there? To be honest, I don't think there's much in that. I really don't. That looks like a draw to me. I don't know about you. Right, so I'll pop Charlotte back in the pots. And these guys are going out, by the way. I'm going to pop these guys up today. I can't uh, leave them any longer. Okay. These are the broad bean. I think these were uh, Bunyard Exhibition. Okay, and as you can see, the flowers are there now, so it, it's got to go out. I mean, and these containers are so small. I mean, if they, if these guys did want to develop a much bigger root system courtesy of the mycorrhizal fungi they couldn't because they're constrained anyway that's the uh, control bean that's what we've got there and as you can see loads of roots loads of roots and this is the bean that had the mycorrhizal fungi on it and as a plant they actually look fairly identical there isn't that much between the two of them and as a plant, the onions and the potatoes, did, they didn't look to be too much between them. Um, right. Let me offer these up, see what you think. What do you reckon? Much of a muchness, I think. Can't say much of a difference there. Um, and it might just be that because they're the roots are being restricted in these containers. Uh, the mycorrhizal fungi can't do its do its magic. Who knows? Right. I don't know what we're going to see here, to be honest. These carrots. I mean, these went in as seeds, so these haven't got on as far as the others. Um, I think there are about four or five seeds germinated in here, and these are the ones that are the control carrots if you like as you see that's fallen away so the roots haven't actually got right to the bottom of that pot yet in the control carrots and these are the mycorrhizal fungi carrots Oh, and these look as though they've, they've, they've 
just and so got to the bottom look, but not much. <laughs> In fact, I think the other looks to have a, this one here, the control carrot, looks to have a better root system than the mycorrhizal fungi carrot. Um, but I'm not going to make a call on this, I'm going to let you do that. You can send me some comments, let me know what you think. Uh, to be honest, I think uh, I hadn't really thought this out, had I? You know, if this mycorrhizal fungi is going to make these root systems bigger and better, then presumably they need the space to expand, and they're not going to do it in these small containers. Okay, so the conclusions for you to draw. Um, and for me, I've got the rest of the day to find somewhere to plant these guys, and that's what I'm going to do next, after I've had a brew. Can you see it? Well, they're fast asleep. We've been for a walk this morning, we've been over the fields. Right, so we'll bang them back in there, like that. It doesn't matter where, what goes where. And I'm going to put those guys on now. I'll find some room in the raised bed for them. So, this is the end of the unofficial mycorrhizal fungi field trial 2016 at homegrown veg. This is part two, it is the last part, there's no more after this. Um, I have actually used mycorrhizal fungi on most of the stuff, if not all of the stuff that's in the raised beds and in pots. Um, who knows, we might see some, some more meaningful results uh, when we start harvesting carrots and potatoes out of the 10 inch pots and out of bags, um, but only time will tell. So this is homegrown veg, signing out.